go ahead and get started. Maybe some of some more show up. I don't know. Uh, I, I have a sack on my desk from the Crocker. I want to show you all this. This is the uh, number 45 blend bold American coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all Trump picture. It's coffee. Trump's picture. <laughs> Are you going to make us a cafe for Bible study? I bet it's good. Am I going to who to what? <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm betting he heard me. But he Does it say don't open till 2020? Or? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Best by 2020? We need to know what the expiration date is. <laughs> Brother, while you're talking about it, there's several coffees out now that a certain percentage of the money goes to the Lonely Warriors. And That's there's what? Go to Wounded Warriors. There's several different brands out that go to different uh, uh, Wounded Warrior groups. I bought one of them last week and it, it's pretty good coffee. This coffee is made at Thrasher, Georgia. Now Dallas, Georgia by Thrasher Coffee Company. The only name made in China. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought that was cute. All right. Thank y'all for being here tonight. And uh, uh, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to uh, Genesis chapter 41. We're going to start reading in verse 50, uh, where we left off. And before we get, yes, sir. Before you get started, I've been waiting since Monday to tell somebody this. <laughs> I got my report back from the doctor. And I said, look the doctor face to face. I said, well, what do you think? He said, nothing changed since last time. I said, wait a minute. And he said, I mean, nothing changed. I'm listening to your chest. I'm listening to your breathing. Uh, we done took every, all the Bibles and all that stuff, and it's, it's the same as it was last year. I said, well, that's not the main reason I was concerned. They found a cyst on my kidney, and he said, I. 40% of people got them, so don't worry about it. I said, well, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and I said, what about the gallstones? When I had my gallbladder, he said, hey, see, none of that showed up. <laughs> I said, well, praise the Lord then. <laughs> and, and I'm just totally amazed. I don't know if it's a uh, bad report or this doctor ain't paying attention or what, but I thank the Lord for it. <laughs> Whatever happened, it wasn't enough in there to alarm anybody. So, yeah. okay. So there we go. Yeah. Awesome. Praise the Lord. You should have told him you mean you ain't got no bad news for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I done learned my lesson about that. Yeah, what kind of doctor are you? Give me some bad news. I want to hear the truth. Yeah, they got something. And I, I hate to interrupt the church meeting like this, but I want to tell y'all something for a fact. I have to buy a solution called a, a butyrol for my nebulizer. Mm -hmm. And with my insurance, drug coverage, uh, major medical, uh, Medicare, uh, supplemental, all that stuff, I've been paying $150 a month for a butyrol. So I got to asking around some people that I know have nebulizers and, and do the, the uh, butyrol, and <laughs> you're one of them. And pe different people told me, I, I pay $4 for mine. I paid 3 for mine. I said, I've been paying 150 So I mentioned that to this doctor, and he said, what? He said, those people you got that nebulizer from are supposed to be supplying that for you. Yeah. He said, let me call them people. So anyway, long story short, he said, forget them people. I'm going to send you a different place. So he gave me their number, and I drove by there and talked to them. And I said, Dr. Burgess called you. He yes, he did. I said, can you help me out on this butyrol? He said, I sure can. I said, how much? He said, I think it's $4. And just, just because I didn't know, you know, I could have asked 10 people and got 10 different answers, probably. It's just according to what they think you'll stand for. I'm telling you, money is, is running and greed is running everything in this world. 
They, they don't get as much as they can any way they can get it. And it was just my ignorance that I hadn't already looked around from where I thought that was normal. Everybody was paying that much. But it turns out, probably 10% are paying that much, and the rest of them are getting 3 or $4 prescription. <laughs> I hate to interrupt church to say that, but that upset me to no end. That, that mm -hmm. really did. I said, my Lord, where's it going in? I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and of course the the, the subject of my brother came up. But we got us talking about a, a boy that she basically had raised that had gone to Iraq and got killed. And when the military notified the boy's mother, they called the head at first. And then of course she called my friend about 3.30 in the morning. But the next day, this black car pulled up, a person in, in uniform come up there to inform the mother that her son had been killed. And what I want your prayers about, because I'm fixing to get into an investigation on this somehow or another. The man asked her, he says, what do you want me to do with the body? Or us, what do you want us to do with the body? She said, what do you mean? I want you to bring the body home so I can bury it. He said, well, it cost you $125,000 for me to bring that body home. He said, well, bury it there for free. And the, the kid had taken out insurance to pay to, as his parents as beneficiary for $250,000. So <coughs> she, of course, went ahead and agreed to it. She's a mother of this child. She went ahead and agreed to it, and they took out $125,000 plus $10,000 to uh, ship him from Little Rock down to Malvern. driving down there. $135,000 they took out of this kid's insurance policy to get him home. Mm -hmm. I said, no, that do, that's, it doesn't work that way. That's the kind of shenanigans going on all over the world. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to get into this. I don't you know, I don't know where it's going to lead me or anything, but y'all keep it in your prayers because I don't know who this lady is, but she got ripped for $135,000. And if I can do anything about it, it's going to get back to her. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Good call. Brother James Hill, would you lead us some more prayer, please? <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Thank you for the opportunity to be back in that house, our Lord. Lord, we pray that uh, you just be with us, be with Gary as he. Uh, uh, brings the word there tonight there, Lord. Just speak through him what you have him to speak, there, Lord. Lord, these uh, things that's been mentioned and everything there, Lord, we just pray that you'd, you'd take hold of them and, and uh, your will would be done there, Lord. Just uh, be with us all as we, we go through this night. Be with us as we travel on. Lord. These things we ask your name. Amen. Amen. Well, we left Joseph uh, last week uh, out of prison. Uh, already got graduated up to second in command of Egypt. He had interpreted Pharaoh's dream, gave God all the glory, and made uh, Pharaoh feel real good because uh, God was speaking to him, and, and uh, God was personally giving Pharaoh messages, and Joseph was uh, blessed to be able to give them to him, and which was all in God's uh, plan. God uh, co uh, connected with uh, Pharaoh, and and, and allowed Joseph to interpret because not because he wanted to uh, lift Pharaoh up, but because he wanted to lift Joseph up. And so uh, it's the way God works. Sometimes uh, there's a lot of beneficiaries to the people around the people God are, is lifting up. And uh, Pharaoh just happens to be one of them. And if I wound up before this is all over with, probably the richest man on earth at that time because everybody that came later had to pay him to get the stuff that was stored for them. And uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> God made uh, made the way, he was making a way to uh, preserve Israel. He was, he was making a way to uh, to complete the prophecy that he had given uh, to Abraham about the 400 years of, of slavery in this nation. And uh, God was bringing about, and I think uh, when you think about all this happening and you think, well, why did this happen? 
I think in the life of Jacob, it's been evident the whole time that Jacob was ha having to grow in, in steps. And if you look at his life, <coughs> as, he, as he fled from uh, Esau and, and uh, before he ever went into the land where, uh, where he uh, got his wife, uh, uh, he encountered God on the way in and he encountered God on the way out. And God was having him to grow and, and he grew mightily. And so I think that uh, the nation of Israel is going to mirror uh, the growth of Jacob and it's going to take place with them being uh, these, these uh, slaves in, in Egypt. And, and they'll begin their growth process all the way till they turn into a nation. So uh, anyway, the seven years of uh, plenty, Joseph's 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, and the seven year, plenteous years uh, began, and uh, Joseph had already gone to work, he had already went out, and we started uh, gathering up from the, the months of plenty. And when we quit, we were just fixing to read about his descendants. So tonight, since there's so few people here, y'all want to ask you to read, just don't, just read, okay? And uh, so uh, we don't have the, that, uh, that, that, that time spent waiting for somebody to read. So if I get somebody to read me verses 50 through 52, very quickly, please. Chapter 41. Uh, chapter 41, yes. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all of my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Okay, so Joseph has, has become a bona fide, certified Egyptian. Okay? He has uh, changed his look. He's changed uh, everything about his life. He has married an Egyptian woman, which is a, a daughter of an Egyptian priest. He's not forgot God. He's not forsaken God. He, he understands who God is and God's still in control. But now you got to remember in this day, Joseph did not have a Bible. Joseph didn't have any writing. Joseph's uh, knowledge of God was, was personal and firsthand, where he had encountered God and God had used him, and he recognized that. That's, that was the extent of who Joseph was in God. And I look at these men of, of, of Revelation, I mean Revelation, Genesis, and, and knowing that, that they had no written word, that they had uh, hand-me-down information uh, from one patriarch to the, to the next. They had, uh, they had their personal encounters. They were placed in certain, and they always realized that God was ever-present, all-seeing with them. And it's amazing to me that, uh, that, that these men lived their lives uh, and, and lived and, and made it into the, the, the Word of God this way, and, and, and they would just come what may, they let they let God use them, and uh, and they did it uh, they did it very uh, effectively, and uh, and 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 so Joseph is where he thinks God, and where he knows by this time God has put him. By this time, he's starting to understand now more about why he's here, and he's ready to move on with his life. And when when uh, you know things change, all of us has got children know that. When children come, life changes. Amen? Mm -hmm. Everything takes on a different look and a different uh, thing, a different way. And, and so when Joseph's uh, sons were born, uh, by the time, and it says, and to Joseph were born two sons before the years of the famine. So this was in, within the seven years of plenty when these, two, when these boys were born. And uh, he called uh, the first one Manasseh. Does anybody know what that word means? Well, it says so in the scripture, really, what it, what it means. What does it mean? Forgetting. Yeah, okay, forgetting. So, for God has said he has made me forget. What did he, what was he talking about? Because he goes on to mention what it was that he forgot. Oh, All right, he forgot the toil, the toil in, in Egypt. He forgot, that meant he forgot slavery. He had, for, he had forgotten prison time. And then he went on to say, and I've forgotten all of my father's house. Now this is a good thing for him to say, but in reality we know 
that as long as he was in Egypt and there was nobody else around him to remind him of this, he had forgotten about it. And we're going to find out a little later on when brothers show up, he, he hadn't really forgotten anything. Okay? And so, uh, but this is, the, this is why he named this this boy what he did is because he, he, if, if he hadn't forgotten, he wanted to forget. He wanted to forget. And, and I think it has more to do with he wanted to, to forgive. He didn't want to bear the, the hatred uh, that he should have borne toward his family, uh, his brothers, for what they had done to him. And so he had forgotten about the toil, and I could see where he could forget about that uh, 13 years of toil, you know, because of how he was elevated and as high as he is elevated and, uh, and as renowned as he was now, being second in power of a, of a powerful nation is Egypt. And then the second son come along, and he called his name Ephraim. Now, what does Ephraim mean? It means fruitful. And so he said, God has caused me to be fruitful in the land. So, so in this, in, in, in my affliction. So again, he, he, he gives all this glory to God for Manasseh. Uh, he said, for God told him to, to forget. And then uh, God uh, has caused me to be fruitful. And, in other words, God has placed me here and I'm content where God has put me. That's kind of what uh, the essence of what he's saying here. And, and I'm over uh, all of the, 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 the stuff that happened to me in my childhood. Wouldn't it be wonderful if it was that simple for us to forget bad things in our lives? Mm -hmm. and, and so, uh, but he, this is the, the, what motivated Joseph to name these, these children the way he did. And, uh, and so that's, that's the attitude, because one thing about Joseph we know, he had, he had a good attitude. He might have been irritated about things, but he always did his best to make things good and make things better not only for himself. He knew that if he made life better for everybody around him, it was going to make his own life better, especially in a situation like this. This is something we all need to learn, by the way. <coughs> Amen? It, you, we need to go out of our way to make life better for those around us, and it's generally going to make our lives better as a result. Okay? But you have to do that with the right attitude. Amen? You can't say, well, I'm always the one that's doing good around here. Nobody else ever does any good. And so that's the wrong attitude to have it uh, toward it. But Joseph wasn't like that. He wanted to make sure everything around him worked well. And if he was in control of all of it, he would take control. He didn't have a problem with that. If all the responsibility and all the burden was on him, he'd take all the responsibility and all the burden and do the best job he could. And that was the thing I see it most in the life of Joseph. And it, it, it bode well for him when he came before Pharaoh. The, what, what, that's not what brought him before Pharaoh. The gift that God had given him to interpret dreams is what had brought him before Pharaoh. That was by God's design. But when Pharaoh told him, I'm going to put you in charge, the Bible says earlier, he went out and went to it. He went out and looked at where everything needed to be, what everything, and he, he took control and he took charge of that. And, and Pharaoh didn't have to worry about nothing anymore because he had this man that, that, that was a godly man and he knew he was a godly man that, that God was had his hand upon and he didn't have to worry about anything because this man of God had everything ready. Okay? Any questions or comments about this? I think what's, un, what's kind of different about him is people like even his daddy, they, even though God allows it, they, they say, I worked hard for everything I got. That's what a lot of people want to say. And, he, he didn't. He endured a lot, but he didn't work hard for anything. He was prisoner and second in command in possibly one minute of, of time. Of, so, so his his thought process is probably a little different than the average bear. Yeah. I mean, Jacob stayed twenty something years for one woman. You know, he worked hard for her. God allowed him to do that, but in this case. He hadn't worked hard for anything, yeah. and and he give God every bit of the credit. He didn't. He don't have a magic potion to read a dream with or anything. So yeah. I'm sure he realizes that it's it's a gift, you know. Yeah, but at the same time, he had a lot of things going on in his life personally. For sure. That that caused him to to want to be to hate people. You know, you oh, just I think see. about that. He he bore that burden uh, that these brothers have done this to me. They put me here, but in reality, 
the older he gets, he realizes his brothers don't really weren't the ones that put him there. God did. And that's that's when he can really come to grips with everything. Okay? And so this is so he, he has uh, he's yielded himself to Egyptian. He he, he he looks like an Egyptian. He he dresses like one. He wears the makeup that they wore back then. He has the jewelry that they had. He has an Egyptian wife. He has an Egyptian palace. Everything about this man now is Egyptian except one thing. What was that? Yes, oh, well, commentary by Bible says that he this, the names that he gave his sons were Hebrew names. Yeah. Yeah. But everything, that's what I was going to say, everything about him was Egyptian except one thing, his heart. His heart was still God's. And so he, he, still, he still had a heart for God. And so uh, uh, let's go ahead and read uh, verses 53 through 57, please. Then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended, and the seven years of famine began to come as Joseph had said. The famine was in all lands, but, not, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. So when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. Whatever he says to you, do. The famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and <laughs> sold to the Egyptians. And the famine became severe in the land of Egypt. So all countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all lands. Okay. So the, uh, Joseph had gone out in the plenteous years. It's, 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 it's something here how uh, verse 46 begins the seven plenteous years. And, and by the, and it, just a few verses later, the, plenteous, the seven years is over with. Joseph's done his job. He's went and gathered... Uh, a fifth of everything uh, that had been uh, available, and uh, and and so now that the uh, grievous years had started, uh, there was a, a lot of food in Egypt, and it was the only place there was any food in all the land. Now we know the thing about the uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the years of famine. Uh, probably the uh, first year uh, that there was still food left in other areas. Uh, people had. You know, so, uh, uh, kept food like, like most of us do. We put up foods and stuff, and, and they probably had to, but when they, they usually just kept enough till they could raise their crops and, and then, uh, you know, replenish, uh, resupply what they needed to keep uh, to survive the rest of the year and for their cattle and all that stuff. They had, to, they had to store that stuff, and they had to raise all that stuff or have the money to buy it and have somebody to raise it for them. Uh, so, uh, uh, these, these people, uh, before this next year's over with, the first crop failure, they're in, they're in a world of hurt uh, because they, they didn't have any way to keep the food uh, like, uh, uh, and preserve it uh, like we do. And, and uh, so I guess they could have they'd built great bins like, like uh, uh, Joseph built in Egypt, but he was preparing for this, and they, they didn't know it was going to happen. And here's something else that, that, that crossed my mind. Here the children of Israel had access, or the children of, of Jacob, Israel, had access to the power of God and they sold him. <laughs> Think about it. They had it. They didn't like it and they got rid of it. They sold him because they didn't like, they didn't like what he said. And so uh, Egypt wound up wound up the beneficiary of the of the of God's blessing to one of their own because they they put him in Egypt. And so of course, like I said, it was by God's uh, 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 God had arranged it to be that way. And so uh, uh, Egypt had had bread. And so they people were beginning to come to Egypt. Verse fifty five is is kind of amazing to me. And when all the land of Egypt was famished. The people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said to the Egyptians, what did he say to them? Go see Joseph. He'll take care of everything. Yeah, and, and look what he says. What he saith to you, do it. What Pharaoh said to them. Amen? And so, uh, you know, I just jotted down a little old note, because I'm always looking for things that remind me of Christ. And, 
in, in this situation where Pharaoh had been given this power, and he was he was in c control of everything uh, that uh, that meant anything on earth, the food supply. And Joseph, uh, Pharaoh told the people, said, you go to Joseph and what he says to you do. And I got to thinking about when the Jesus Christ in the transfiguration uh, up on the mountain where uh, he met with Elijah and Moses. And you know, remember the bright light showed up and Peter, James, and John saw it and they just, whoa, you know, let's build a temple and all that right here because of this. And you, do you remember what they heard from heaven as they watched that scene? Hear him. Hear him. That's Jesus. why God spoke to them yeah. from, from heaven when they were gazing upon this spectacle. Peter was having all kinds of trouble keeping his mouth shut, and, and, and he was saying, Let's build the temple to each. Let's build three temples, one to each one. And God spoke to That's my. So hear him. Yeah. You be quiet. Listen. And, and that's kind of what the way Pharaoh does with Joseph. He tells the people, You hear him. You do what he says. Whatever he says, you do it. And so uh, it says then that the famine was all over the world, all over the earth, and Joseph began to open up all of the storehouses, and he sold the food. Amen? He, he sold the food. Before any food was given away, all the money had to be take, taken in. If you want it, here it is, buy it. Okay? Is that the way government works today? Not in our nation. <laughs> They rake it in and then they just give it away. Yeah, and so that's, that's the way it is. But they weren't giving it away, they were selling it. And the family got worse and worse. And then other countries began, began uh, to come into Egypt uh, to Joseph to buy corn. Now God has set up the meeting. Because just like everybody else, Jacob and his family don't have anything to eat. And when when you well, when you read this story and you see how how it just it, it just comes together and and uh, you know it, it's amazing how God can work and it's amazing how later on He's going to introduce Scripture to us to show how all this this stuff uh, works. God starts making rules and He starts making proverbs and He starts making sayings that uh, through His His people God's speaking through them they write it down. And uh, so uh, let's, uh, somebody read for me ver uh, chapter 42, uh, verses 1 through 6, please. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob and his sons, why do you look one on another? I'm sorry, Jacob said to his sons, why do you look one upon another? And he said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down there and buy for us from that place that we may live and not die. And Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Je Benjamin, Joseph's brother Jacob, sat not with his brother, for he said, Least perhaps mischief befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. You said through six? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Joseph was a governor over the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. Okay, so here it is. <laughs> and it, it, to me, it, it's kind of humorous, the very first verse here, because it kind of gives you a picture of, it, it, it's sort of like the stooges at work in the camp of Israel, uh, because they're in such turmoil, and it's all because of the guilt and the shame and remorse that they have over what they have done to Joseph. And, and, and they're afraid because of what it had done to their daddy. And, and, uh, and things are just not good there. There's just this, this, this cloud that's hanging over this family. And, and Jacob, Jacob, when he, he saw there wasn't anything to eat, then look at what he says. Why do you look at one another like this? What, what, what are you standing around looking at? That's kind of the way it would be. You know, everybody said, we don't have anything to eat. Well, what do you look at one another for? they got food and eat it. Go get us some. You know, that's kind of the way they, they don't talk like we do. But if they did, that's what it would say here. 
you know. Jacob is, is yeah, Jacob's a little perplexed. He's got all these big old overgrown boys and they're sitting around looking at one another like what we do and we're gonna starve to death and everything's gonna die. And he said, what are you looking at one another for? And he said, I've heard there's corn down there. Get, get down there and get some. That's what he says. He said, get you down thither and buy for us from thence, that's hard to say, uh, that we may live and not die. If you don't go get us something to eat, boys, we're going to die. And I get going. That's what he, that's the way he put to them. But when it come down to uh, sending all the kids, he didn't send all of them. Which one didn't he send? Benjamin. Benjamin picked the baby boy. Mm -hmm. I think he was a, kind of somewhere in the back of his mind wondered if his older son didn't have something to do with his younger son. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 Joseph and Benjamin both were from the mother that he loved. That's right. They were Rachel's kids. And this is the only thing he had left from Rachel. But you know, I only raised two boys, not sure not 12 of them. But I could usually tell when they were plotting something. Mm -hmm. And it just makes you wonder if somewhere in Joe, uh, Jacob's brain, he didn't, <coughs> he didn't think that may be the reason he don't have Joseph. Yeah. That may be another reason he didn't see Benjamin. He may, I don't know, I got an inkling what was going on around the house. Usually, eventually, old Deb would catch on by the way they acted. He's been with them a long time now. And it just, it just makes you wonder, does he have a doubt in him? If you remember these boys, the older ones especially, had already done things to cause him not to, to trust them. And you almost get the impression in the coming scriptures that he don't even like Reuben at all. <laughs> well, you know, Reuben is the one that had slept with his concubine, and he would, he didn't take that lightly. And he took away the birthright and everything, and then Levi and Simeon, or Simeon and Levi, because it was it was Reuben, Simeon, and Levi, and age and Judah, uh, and Simeon and, and uh, uh, Levi had embarrassed him by by killing those people the way they did, and, it, and he, he said they caused them to stink in the land. So they were all out of the picture as far as Jacob was concerned. They didn't, they didn't have anything going for them as far as Daddy was concerned. So he had done lost all respect for them and didn't really care anything about them. And then this kind of came up with Joseph, and you're right. I figure he blamed all of them. I do too. I think he think Benjamin might not be safe with these boys. <laughs> yeah. you'll, I, you'll, I, see, I think, you'll see that too later on when yes, you realize what about Benjamin? He, had he even been born? He hadn't even been born whenever Joseph was sold into slavery, had he? Yeah, because uh, uh, Rachel was already dead. Okay. Yeah, he was just a little boy. And uh, and see, that's Joseph uh, had knew, knew him because Joseph was only 17. And so uh, uh, I don't remember, I, I didn't put a pencil to it or try to figure out how old Benjamin was, how much younger he was than. Uh, somebody might want to attempt to do that, and we'll, we'll know. But he was a, a, just a little child when uh, when all that went down. And so now we know that uh, uh, Joseph's been in Egypt. Now uh, he was he's 37. Now when when the seven years of plenty, because he was 30 when he went before Pharaoh, the seven years of plenty is gone. He's 37 or 38 years old now that this has transpired. So. Benjamin's not just a little child anymore. He's probably he's probably on on up in his later teenage years, or maybe even his early twenties. So I figure he is. That's just my way of thinking. But I don't have any way of proving that because I hadn't I didn't check that to see if it's even in the Bible. The difference in their ages. But but Rachel was dead. So when this she happened, so she died giving birth to Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Uh, Anyway, so he wouldn't send Benjamin, uh, so uh, he, he wouldn't let him go, he, and why? <laughs> he, he made it point blank, and this is something else that shows you something about the family. I don't want him to go unless something bad happens to him. In other words, there may be something bad happen to the rest of you, but ain't nothing going to happen to him. He's staying with me. And that, yeah, that, that's kind of the way he put it to him, you know. And, and uh, of course, you have to read that into it, I guess, but that's what he says. He said, uh, uh, Set not uh, Benjamin, his brother, for he said, Lest peradventure mischief shall befall him. And so they came to buy corn, and uh, they, they approached the governor, and, uh, 
and Joseph, uh, brethren, it says, because uh, uh, Joseph is the governor, and look in verse 6. Joseph's brethren came, and what did they do? They bowed down to him. Faces to the ground. Yeah, with their faces to the ground. Now, remember when they got angry at Joseph because he told them he had had a dream? And you remember that dream, what that dream said that would happen? He said they were bowing to him. Yeah, and notice this. He had said that. They didn't even know when they had fulfilled this prophecy. They didn't at this point even know that he was Joseph. Had no idea. That's how much Joseph had changed as, as, as he had become an Egyptian that they they didn't recognize who he was. Amen? Yeah. Now, I know when I was 17, and, and by the time I was 37, there was probably a lot of difference in the way I looked, and most of us are all could say that. Uh, but uh, cause, And I ran across people I went to school with uh, that I hadn't seen since I got out of school. I run across them now. They absolutely don't know who I am. Only the ones that I've seen, uh, you know, a lot since then, but the ones I have not seen, they don't recognize me. And I don't recognize them a lot, you know. And so uh, they, this is what had happened, especially since he had turned into an Egyptian. So the, uh, the dream that he had about, about them bowing down to him had been fulfilled. And this is one of the things that had caused them uh, to hate his guts, okay? And what else did he dream? Who else was going to bow down to him for his old wit? Father and mother. And father and, and mother, of course, it wouldn't have been Rachel. It, would, it was the closest thing he had to a mother now would have been Bella, her handmaid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, any questions or comments so far? Yes, ma'am. Quick comment. You know, you were, you were saying a while ago there's some parallels between Joseph and Christ. And um, just like just like the the Jewish people, the Israelites didn't recognize Christ for who he was the first time they saw him. Mm -hmm. Joseph's brother, and, you know, he was the one that could have saved him and they didn't recognize who he was. They didn't. Absolutely. That's kind of a parallel there. Yeah, it is a parallel. Mm -hmm. it, it, his own, his own, he came to his own and they knew him not. Right. And, uh, and so this is, uh, this is actually uh, uh, another picture of, of what was going to happen to Christ later on. Uh, somebody read for me verses 7 and 8, please. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made him himself strange unto them, and spake mm -hmm. roughly unto them. And he said unto them, when, when, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not. Now, Joseph now has a very distinct advantage over his brothers. And although he named his children the names that he did, that he was going to be able to forget all this, you can rest assured when those brothers came and he recognized who they were and they bowed down to him, right now he's thinking, mm-hmm. This is what I told you was going to happen. This is all going on in my mind. He probably begins to relive every bit of that, and he sees the ones that have sold him into slavery and the captivity, and, and he sees them, and now it's time to have a little fun. Amen? At their expense. His payback is rough. You know, I told you a while ago that later on the Lord was going to give us scriptures and things that would, would relate to the very lives of these people. And one of them that I thought of when I saw this is be sure your sin will find you out. And now these guys have lived under the shadow of what they had done, thinking Joseph was probably dead by this time, not even thinking it. And if, if, not, if the best case scenario, he's a slave in somebody's house. But... <laughs> Not, not in their wildest of dreams or imagination, because they even imagined that the person they were bound down to was the one they had sold as a slave boy. And so uh, he's going to take full advantage of this, and it says that he, he, he spake, uh, he made himself strange unto them. That means he didn't even, they didn't even know he could understand what they were saying in Hebrew. 
because he could speak Egyptian now, okay? And so he made himself stranger to them and he spoke how to them? Kindly, sweetly, wonderfully? Oh, roughly, the Bible says. Now what do you think that means? <laughs> he didn't say anything kind to them, did he? Yeah, he, he was very direct with them. He was very rough with them. He, he didn't have anything nice to say to them. And he began to question them very suspiciously. Where do you come from? And uh, they, they told him we came from Canaan to buy food. And, and then the Bible says that he knew them, but they did not know him. And so now you see that Joseph is fixing to have a lot of, I, I, I don't think it's fun, you could call it fun, but he's fixing to try his best to make them suffer in this short period of time as much or more than he did in that 13 years before he became the second in command of Egypt. You can rest assured he's fixing to make them know that uh, they didn't do good and he ain't happy about it. Okay? Well, let me ask you. When he, when he, met, when he named Manasseh, do you think it more or less meant he forgave? No. Them? Do, you think it, do you think he just forgave? I don't think he did. I think he named it because that's what he wanted to do. I think he wanted to forget. I think he wanted to move on. I just don't think that he could. I know one thing, and I say this all the time. I'm not God. Yeah. Joseph's not God. God can forgive and forget. I can forgive. I can't forget to save well, that's, that's, that was my point. <laughs> well, I think forgetting. the fact that he showed up without Benjamin probably thought in his brain was, okay, what's, where's my brother? You know, because Joseph remembered. He sold him into slavery too. Yeah, yeah. so... And I think that's what's going to lead us on into the next few chapters, the verses in the next chapter, you know, of why he's demanding them to do this. You know, you bring Benjamin, you know, you send him back. But, you know, that would, you know, if, if, if for instance, my family were to show up and say, for instance, without Lana and come demanding on this, well, okay, well, where's Lana, you know, or where's Sarah? You know, what you, know? you got to keep in mind, too, is we're all wound up on what's going on with Joseph, but those are the 12 tribes of Egypt, and God is teaching those brothers a, a valuable lesson. He's using Joseph to do it. So he's maturing those those ones that slept with his daddy's concubines, and he's getting them ready to be tribe leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not just about Joseph here. No, no. It, it's it, about how he's fixing this because when they go home to daddy and all, these guys are learning a valuable right. lesson straight from God. And, and, and Joseph just happened to be the one that well, is administering the punishment. <laughs> a lot of consequences come out of this decision to sell Joseph. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> and and they recognize that what's going on them right now, later on, we're going to read it. They recognize this because of what they did to Joseph, that yes. this is happening. They just don't know if Joseph doing it. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure that the 400 years of slavery is not a consequence for them selling Joseph. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. If, I, I've been wondering if that's not one of the consequences they have to pay because of the brother's decision to sell Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, there's a whole lesson, a whole a world of information of what the brothers are catching. Yeah. Yeah. All right, somebody read for me. This is going to be kind of a, well, not too long, verses 9 through 17. This is where he starts to really mess with them. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them, and said unto them, Ye are spies to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food are they servants come. And we are all of one man's son. We are true mm -hmm. men. Thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. And Joseph said unto them, That is it that I speak unto you, saying, Ye are spies. Hereby ye shall be proved by the life of Pharaoh. Ye shall not go henceforth, except your youngest brother come. Send one of you, and let him fetch your brother, and ye shall be kept in prison, that your words may be proved whether there be any truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh surely ye are spies. And he put them all together into war for three days. 
<laughs> but uh, I notice in, in verse 9 where it says, because we were talking about that Joseph forgot, and it said God, how does it state that? It says, God said he hath made me forget. Okay, so that's what he said. But the first thing he does when he encounters these men is he remembers those dreams. And he didn't know when he dreamed that or when he gave them the, the translation of the, the interpretation of the dream. He didn't know until this point how these dreams were going to work out. But he knows now that this dream, that this prophecy, this dream that he had had about them had already been fulfilled. And he, he knew that had happened, so he remembers these dreams which he had dreamed of them. And he began to, to, to you know, the Bible says already, he's treating them roughly. And he's not being kind to them at all because he's still got bone to pick with these guys now. And so uh, he, he, he accuses them of what? Spies. You're spies. Now everybody in the world around you is starving to death because there ain't no food. And he accuses them of being spies coming in to to see what they could plunder from Egypt. Like, you know, who's got, a, who's got any food to feed the army to attack Egypt right now? And they one got all the food. I and, think, you know, he was a spy, right? He would go he would go tell Daddy what they were doing. He was a tattletale. They said, here he comes. He's a, yeah. he's a tattletale. He's, he's a spy. I think yeah. he's getting them back right here myself. <laughs> yeah, he's getting he even getting with them. And, and they began to, they began to, oh, no, no, no. And they call him Lord. No, no, my Lord. No, no, we're not. We're not. We're we're just servants. We just came here to buy food, and and then they began to describe to him who they are. They began to really talk and, and try to describe to him who they are and where they came from. And it's interesting. And he holds his peace, and uh, and 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 they they begin to say in verse thirteen, "Thy servants are twelve brethren," and they so they included Joseph in this because he's one of twelve brethren. And uh, he said, the sons of the land of Canaan, and behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. That's the way they put it to him. And the one that is not is the one that is they're standing in front of him. Okay? <laughs> and, you know, if you want to look at Christ again, you see another picture here. The one that was supposed to be dead ain't dead. Okay? And so they're, they're, not only are they, is he not dead, they're bowed down in front of him right now. Okay, and so uh, so and so Joseph, Joseph said unto them again that, that you are spies, and then he says, "I'm going to give you a chance to prove to me that you're not. I want to see this other brother. If I see this other brother, I'm going to believe you. You're not spies. Maybe he didn't say that, did he? And then he did something that that was cool. I thought he put them all in ward. That means he put them in jail together." And he's going to give them time to, yeah. You can hear Reuben right now. I told y'all not to do that, but no, you had to do it anyway. Now look where it got us here. Yeah. yeah, for three days. Three days. So here's some more pictures of Christ. They're, they're playing in the ward for, for, for these three days, and, and they're going to have to prove now uh, that they're telling the truth. He's not going to take their word for it. And so uh, it's interesting here, but let, let's go ahead and read uh, verses 18 through 24, somebody, please. Verse 18. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye, carry corn for the famine of your houses. But bring your youngest brethren unto me. So shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. And they said one to another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the anguish of his soul when we besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore in, is this distress upon us, come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child. You would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. And he turned himself about from them and wept, and returned to them again, and communed with them, and took from them Simeon, and bound him before their eyes. <laughs> well, he's wearing them out now, isn't he? And you know, he, and it doesn't mention up until this point that Joseph's not speaking to them to, to their face. He's not. He's speaking to them in Egyptian, 
and he's allowing an, inter an interpreter to, to, to speak for him to them and for, for them to him like he ain't got a clue what they're saying. Boy, he's putting on a show for them now. He, and I think in his mind, he's trying to figure out just exactly what it really is he wants to do to these guys. Because he, he's reliving all of these feelings and all these, all this anger and all this stuff is boiling up in him. But when they mention Benjamin, and Benjamin's not one, he wants to see Benjamin. This is his only brother. And he wants to see Benjamin really, really bad. And so he's devising a scheme to get Benjamin there. And, and so uh, he, he, he lets him, he, he goes to him the third day and he, he's listening to everything they say. They don't think he can understand anything that they're saying. <laughs> and he's listening to every word of it. And, and uh, so uh, he, he mentions in verse, they mentioned in verse 21, they were saying to one another, we are very guilty concerning our brother. So these three days they've had to think, they realize that this is a punishment from God for what they have done to their brother, okay? And so, uh, and that we saw the anguish, they began to describe what, what they witnessed from Joseph, and you know this had haunted them, uh, that, that, uh, that he was anguished of his soul when he saw us, and we would not hear, therefore his distress has come upon us. We feel now, we understand now the anguish that he felt as we betrayed him and sold him into slavery, we feel and understand now how he felt. That's what they're saying. And so uh, Joseph is uh, listening to all this, and that's when Reuben speaks up and he pointed the finger at everybody. And he did that. He, he told them, he said, put him in the pit. And remember, he, he, he had them to put him in the pit. And he went off to do something with the flock. And his plan was when all the rest of them left, he was going to come back and get that boy and take him back home to daddy. And, and that's what his plan was. But when he was gone is when they sold him. And when he came back, the child was not there. And so uh, he, he, he began to remind them. And, and now here's the thing about it. This is stuff Joseph don't know about till just now. Okay? So not only is, is their sin finding them out, Joseph is learning the truth about how they felt. He sees from the, birth, the previous verse how they felt, how they remembered the anguish, how they, they had thought about this and they probably felt sorry for them and wishing they hadn't done it later on. But he didn't know that Reuben was trying to rescue him. He didn't know that till just now, okay? And so he, he finds this out. And so uh, uh, they, they didn't know that, that Joseph understood them, and he's listening to all of this. And then he turned himself away from them. What did he do then? Cried. He cried. When he heard that they, felt, that they felt bad about it, and then he heard that Reuben had actually tried to save him, because he didn't know that till just now. He cried. There was really somebody that cared. They, 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 it, wasn't, it wasn't all of the brothers that did this to him. And they regretted doing it to him. And so he found this out. So he had to go find a place. He turned himself from about them and he wept. And then he came back to them again. He communed with them. And then it's funny because normally he would have taken Reuben and tied him up, the oldest boy. But he, he left Reuben out because he found out Reuben had tried to save him, so he went to the next one. He got Simeon, and he tied him up front of him because he knew Simeon had something to do with him. So think about that. So, yeah, but don't you think Reuben had, he had, he had, his intentions wasn't good. He was wanting to save face. Well, he was Because terrible. he was wanting to bring Joseph back to his days and these, these brothers of mine was wanting to leave them there for dead, but I got him and brought him back to you. Perhaps, but he was still the only one that stood up for him. Yeah, but I think he died for the same face. Yeah, well, he, he may have his motives. And yeah, regardless of his motives, uh, yeah. Joseph spared him at this time, and he's going to let him go back home to daddy. And I think, I think in reality, Reuben would have probably rather been the one that, that had to stay and let the rest of them explain what was going on. <laughs> But anyway, the, the, what, whoever, to me, whoever got bound up and stayed there in Egypt was way better off than the ones that had to go back. Okay? Thanks, Jacob. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and, and, uh, and, and uh, we're not going to try to finish the chapter. Uh, let's see. Y'all read for me. Somebody read for me verses 25 through 28, and we'll call it evening. Then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn and to be 
restore every man's money into his sack, and to give them provision for the way, and thus did he into them. And they loaded their asses with the corn, and departed thence. And as one of them opened their, his sack to give his ass provision, in the, in the end he espied his money, for behold, it was in his sack's mouth. And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is in even in my sack. And their heart <clears throat> failed them, and they were afraid, saying one to another, What is this that God hath done unto us? All right. So Joseph had, had, had commanded them to, to put, put their grain in their sack and everything, and then put their money back in there. Now, why do you think he did that? <laughs> Any kind, any any ideas on why he did it that way? I think he's feeding his family to the, and not charging for it. I just make sure so they have the money to come back. It's hard to believe if he did it graciously or to torment them more. It, you don't really get the uh, understanding from this why he did it the way he did it. He might have done it so that they would, he would be sure that they had the money to come back. To bring the well, yeah, he'd been gone a long time, so he didn't really know how much money that Jacob had. But <coughs> Jacob actually had way more money than he yeah, seen. But he didn't, but he didn't know that because God had blessed Jacob because he, he the, the blessing of God was upon him. I think he had a plan in everything well, that he set foot to do, and that was part of his motion right there. I think he was wanting to see what their hearts were. And once they got the money, that, oh, no, he's going to really think we are spies. Yeah. And so, to, to go back and he was going to see if they was going to come back and, and, and own up to what had happened. You know with them phantoms like that too, I imagine they were borrowing from each other and the money market was crashing because, <laughs> you know, they thought any next year is going to be better if we can just make it through this year. And, and they borrowed and took from their family and, well, if next year would we'll be better until it eat them all up, you know. I think he did it. So he'd be sure and come back. I don't know. I have, I don't. I, I don't know why he did. It. You know. I just. It's just a, a guess. But I know the effect that it had <laughs> when they when they got away from Egypt and they got headed home and they stopped and it was time to feed the donkeys and and they needed to take some of the grain out to feed the animals and maybe feed themselves too and. And uh, when we're, we're, proven, up, we're not oops. spies, and now we're thieves. Yeah, yeah. there the money. <laughs> and what the Bible say? Their heart failed them. It scared them to death. Their heart, they got the dropsy. Oh, <laughs> this can't be happening to us. What else is going to happen to us? And then they got to come home with all that money. And yeah. Their sacks and, their dad. And, and then who do they blame? God. God. Look, notice that. Notice that. Now you got to remember who else is in this group of men with them. What's the other brother? Well, I don't know if we mentioned his name or not. His name's Judas. Judas the fourth born, and he is going to be the one who carries the, the lineage of Christ. He's the one that's going to carry on the, the, the godly bloodline that Christ is going to come from. And he's in this group now. So that just tells us that, you know, just because just because these men were in the godly bloodline of Christ, don't mean life was easy for them. And don't mean they didn't cause trouble, that they didn't get in trouble, that they didn't do things that were sinful. Because and I thank God that he does use sinful men. Aren't you glad that he does? And so Judah's in this bunch, and they they're right now his heart is failing just like the rest of them. They were afraid, and they said one to another, what is this that God hath done unto us? No, listen to this. They knew what they had done was wrong. They knew they were guilty. They knew they were paying for it, but they were blaming God. Amen? They were blaming God. Did we do that? Sure. I don't blame God. Now, I've never blamed God for anything, but I'm always, I blame other people. You know, well, if you hadn't have done that, this wouldn't have happened, you know. Yeah. Which is basically probably pretty close to. But what I'm saying is, they 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 were at first blaming themselves. Right, right. But now things have gotten worse, so they ain't blaming themselves no more. They're blaming. It's got to be God doing it. That's was he? I'm surprised they're not blaming each other. Which one of you guys? Well, they already did that. Yeah. Reuben's already done that. He's already pointed the fingers at the rest of them. Yes, he was doing it. 
But God was doing this to them, wasn't he? Yes. He absolutely was. He was doing yes. this to them. Are what? you asking if maybe we see when God is actually trying to teach us something through bad things happening to us, if this is, are we really, are we willing to see this is God? Or I'm, I'm not sure I understand your question. I, I think what I'm trying to say is they have sinned. What they did to Joseph was a sin. They lied to their daddy. They caused undue stress on their daddy that, uh, to the point where he became a homebody and overprotective of the younger son. He lost all respect for those boys because of what they had done. He was, he was more caring about uh, Benjamin the young one. He didn't really care what happened to the rest of them. He acted that way until we, get, until we find out later what he says about Simeon. But, uh, and, and so then when they get here and all this stuff is falling apart, they've been accused of being spies, all of this has, has come apart. And I think we're seeing that sin has consequences and it has an effect on everybody around us and this is the consequence it's fixing to affect Jacob it's fixing to affect Benjamin and it's fixing to affect the, the, the beginning of their nation for 430 years that's the ripple effect of this sin. it actually goes further than that oh yeah it goes way further than uh, that but if you, if you look you know you mentioned earlier that about the birthright who gets the birthright now from Israel mm -hmm. It, 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 it lands on Manasseh and, and Ephraim. You know, it's taken and Joseph, away. Joseph, not even the tribe. Yeah, yeah. Joseph is, is dead now. When, when, well, well, I don't know. You're but, getting way ahead. Well, I know. I'm just <laughs> talking about everything that happens, you know. But the birthright goes to Manasseh and Ephraim. And then later on, down, you know, when, when Israel splits, you have the southern kingdom and northern kingdom. Because the northern kingdom. Uh, Manasseh and Ephraim go to the north. They take the name Israel. Mm -hmm. The southern kingdom, you, you've got uh, two tribes. Well, it's actually three, but um, the uh, Judah and Benjamin. Judah, Benjamin, and some Levites. But they're, well, they're Levites and all of them. Yeah. All of them had Levites. Levites. They had Levites scattered through everyone. Because Levi was not a tribe either. They didn't have an inheritance. They did not have an, They were not allowed to own land, but yeah. you know. I, well, they did around the cities. They did, but it was against God's law. Yeah, they but did. they didn't have provinces like the rest of them had. They yeah. were. They had to locate around the cities of, of, of worship. The rest of Israel was supposed to take care of Levi because yeah. Levi was supposed to be the priest. Right. But you know, even, but like I say, even when the, when the nation split. The northern tribes that took the name Israel because Manasseh and Ephraim was the one given, he was raised up above Manasseh even though he was second born. But he was the one in charge of the northern tribes. This is the ten lost tribes later on. But uh, there's a lot of consequences come out of selling Joseph. Yeah, I did. Would you stand please? Thank y'all for being here tonight and taking up your time. And I know it's, it was almost dark when we got here tonight, wasn't it? But uh, anyway, I appreciate you being here. Sit fast and make sure you got your phone in your pocket. And, uh, <laughs> 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 make sure you take it away, away from Troy there. Don't let him run off. I got it. I cleaned it's it up. Nice don't need <laughs> <laughs> uh, But I thank y'all for being here. And don't forget uh, Sunday uh, service, uh, uh, Saturday. At 2 o'clock is when we're going to have a memorial service for uh, uh, Travis Stuckey. That's uh, uh, Sidney Vicky's brother that passed away, so there's going to be a memorial service here if you'd like to attend that. Uh, Sunday, uh, we'll have Sunday morning service, and Sunday night is the uh, unity service, and uh, uh, Sister Terry and, and some of the others have got some uh, songs, and Gina will talk to you, see if you're going to feel like maybe singing one too. And, we're going to have some special singing, and I know already uh, from what I've heard that there's going to be quite a few visitors here from other churches. So I know uh, I was with Brother Gene from Smyrna today. He had surgery, and I went up there with him, and 
and they, their church is coming up here. I don't know how many of them will be here, but there was about 10 of them there today, and they were all said they were going to be here. So I'm expecting a pretty big crowd. So y'all come on out and uh, uh, let's uh, worship in unity together. I'm looking forward to it. I dread it in a way. I'm nervous about it because uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to preach about to them yet. But anyway, we're Lord working on it, so we're, we'll we'll get it. We'll get it down. Yeah. Well, like like Brother Gene told me last yesterday when I talked to him, he said, "Brother, just do like y'all we do. Just shut corn." And so, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be shucking corn Sunday night. So anyway. I hope y'all get to come and, and look forward to a, a blessing in a time of, of unity. You know, if there's one time that this country needs the unity of the Christian people, it's now. Time we quit arguing amongst ourselves and we get together for the glory of God and, and, and be somebody to be reckoned with in His kingdom work. Amen? Amen. Quit pointing fingers at each other and trying to take people away from each other and we quit telling each other what the other ones need to do. We need to get get back down to where uh, where it all starts and begins, and that's with Jesus Christ, and that's that's what we all have in common. Brother Sam, would you dismiss us, please? Father, once again, we want to thank you for the privilege of being able to come together with other believers and have a good Bible study. We can put into understanding of history and everything, and we saw to understand it better and better. Lord, you know, every one of the things prayer is, you know what their needs are. You know, some of them need salvation. Some of them need to be comforted with passive love for us and different things like that. <coughs> financial, whatever. And Lord, we just ask you to bless and meet all these needs according to your will. Be with us as we get separate ways. We're supported there. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.